Hello everyone, hope you're doing well and staying safe. And I cannot even remember the last time I've just done a casual wrap up of books that I read in my 2021, no, 2020 favorites and least favorite books video. I mentioned in that that 2021 has already been a good reading year. I've read six titles I'm gonna be reviewing today, spoiler free of course. It's a mix of books, graphic novels, horror, thrillers, even a romance novel, and I'm pretty sure I rated all of these at least three and a half stars and above. I have not read any duds yet so far this year. So in no particular order, let's go ahead and get started. First is the graphic novel Witches by Scott Snyder, and I don't know how it has taken me so long to read this. When I think of horror graphic novels, I really think of Witches and Lock and Key, which I read a long time ago. So again, I don't know why it took me so long to pick this up. This came out a few years back and it's about a father, mother, and their young teenage daughter. The teenage daughter goes into the woods with her bully. A fight ensues. I won't say exactly what happens and the bully disappears. So they transfer schools hoping that she can kind of restart anew. But as you can tell by the title, there are witches in the woods and this is a horrifying bloody graphic novel for even though that I read it would be for some reason just that it has to do with you know a couple pa nice parents and their daughter I just assumed this was gonna be a little bit more on the tame side but this was incredibly violent very very scary and fast-paced and not just because of the title the witches in this book reminded me of the witches in the movie the witch just in the sense that there's something very visceral and ancient and disturbing feeling to them. They're not your classic witches you tend to think of. So I highly, highly recommend. My only negative for this was that I thought it was too fast-paced. I enjoyed it so much and I wish it had been twice as long. And I don't mean that just in the sense of, oh, I wish it were longer. I mean that it was so fast-paced that sometimes it was a little bit hard to keep up with because if you miss one line, the next section isn't going to make sense. But I enjoyed every character. The ending was really heartfelt and just overall terrifying experience in the best way possible. Right, then is the novel The Devil in Silver by Victor Laval. I've been talking about wanting to read Victor Laval for a while and I went with The Devil in Silver simply because it was available <laughs> at my local library but his probably more popular books are The Ballad of Black Tom and The Changeling. Our protagonist of this book is Pepper and he gets into a little bit of an altercation with the police and the police because they're just tired it's the end of their shift they don't want to deal with all the paperwork of putting him in jail and Instead, they send him to a local psychiatric facility just so that they can deal with him, even though that's not really the place that he should be going. And this, again, no spoilers in any of these. I'm, if I'm saying something that happens, it's because it's in any high-level summary on Goodreads. But there is an animal, sort of an animal, not really, roaming the halls, killing patients living in this facility. But it's a very, very disturbing, weird scenario that I never even would have fathomed for a horror novel. This was not remotely what I expected. There are some violent scenes, some very, very scary scenes, even just at the very, very beginning of the book when Pepper feels this like hot breath behind him and no one else seems to realize that it's there. Some scenes are horrifying, you know, when it comes to the true stereotypical horror. What's actually much more scary is overall just Laval's view on the state of mental health in America. And, you know, he very clearly states a lot of his views through the minds of the other characters and just little and little snippets that are inserted throughout the book that aren't necessarily directly tied to the plot. I could see how that might bother other people and it might come across as a little bit preachy, but I enjoyed all of it. Even there's, you know, a whole section that's pretty lengthy where they just sidetrack and he talks about Van Gogh and it is fascinating. And now I know so much more about Van Gogh and he's just such a talented writer that all of it felt so intentional. And there were also scenes and, you know, when I talk about sort of Van Gogh, that'll maybe make sense to those of you who have read it, and another character who's actually part of the main plot line, where I really came close to crying, and this book really hit me so much more, and I cared about every single side character. I don't really have anything negative to say about this, aside from the fact that it dragged a tiny bit, maybe in the middle, but overall, 
fascinating book. One of the most unique horror novels I've ever read. Then we just could not be going to a more different genre and that is Evie Drake Starts Over by Linda Holmes. So also clearly I know nothing about this author because when I mentioned this in my 2021 TBR and I said oh I, you know I've never read anything by her before. If there are other books by her let me know. And other people said no the reason people know of her is because I guess she hosts a pretty popular podcast. I think it's on NPR which I haven't checked out yet but I do want to. But this is a romance novel that also has a lot of sports in it. So you know I do like romance but as I said in my 2021 at TBR typically that's more just on literatica. I'm not generally picking up like full romance novel books. But this is about Evie Drake. She lives of course as a romance novel so she lives in a sleepy seaside town in Maine. And again this all happens within the first five pages so this is not a spoiler. She lives with her husband who she is not happy with and she's packing up and leaving him which he doesn't realize. And on that same day he dies. So no one in her circle realizes that on this day her husband dies in an accident that his wife was actually planning on leaving him. So she's having to deal with that sort of psychological guilt of people, of people assuming that she feels a way that she doesn't. And one of her friends has the idea to have her use the extra apartment that's in her house to host a famous, very attractive, retired baseball player, Dean, who's suddenly lost the ability to throw. And as you can guess, things happen from there. This was exactly what I needed. I read it around Valentine's Day and sometimes I just get the urge, well I say sometimes, I can't remember the last time this happened, but I just got the urge to read something very cozy and sweet and inviting and that was exactly what this was and what I needed. I thought it was incredibly charming. I will say that I did find Evie, wait is it Evie or Evie? I'm forgetting. But I did find her a little bit annoying at times, which is intentional. I think we're supposed to be annoyed by all of those things. I don't think this is a book that I'm gonna remember existed in a few years, but it was exactly what I needed and I do recommend it. Then is another graphic novel and that is Infidel. This is one that I had not heard of before, but I was scrolling just top horror graphic novels and I came across this one. And this is about an American Muslim woman and her multiracial neighbors who move into a building haunted by entities that feed off xenophobia. So really, really interesting concept. I'm always interested when horror is being mixed with racism, especially when you think of movies like His House, anything by Jordan Peele. It's something we're starting to see more and more of, but I think that blend works not surprisingly really well. If you go on Goodreads, people have very mixed thoughts on this book. There are a lot of one-star reviews that think this take on racism was really superficial with the idea that you know and again this is not a spoiler it's in every summary that it's sort of almost the hatred around race is killing and attacking people in the building. Some people viewed that as very superficial and kind of a weak plot. Other people absolutely adored it and thought it was very nuanced. This is one of the first things I read in 2021, so it's been a couple months since I picked it up. And I have to admit, the drawings and the art style I thought were fantastic and have really stuck with me, but I, now looking back, I can see why people felt it was a little bit superficial in its discussion about race. I never really felt that I got to know any of the side characters whatsoever. I couldn't tell you any of their names because they were never really provided with that much depth. And I think the idea of an entity that's sort of feeding off of racism is an interesting concept, but I do wish it had been explored a little bit further. So again, I have mixed thoughts on this one. I think if you like horror, if you sound like you might be interested on this, I do think it's really worthwhile to pick up, but I didn't enjoy every aspect of this. Then is Strange Weather by Joe Hill. I've read a couple books by Joe Hill, but it's been a really long time. And this is for novellas and to be very transparent I read two of these fully and the other two I sort of skimmed but again 2020 2021 we're not gonna waste our time reading topics we're not interested in this is a really fun well I shouldn't describe these as fun because some are really horrifying but this is a interesting mix of horror and sci-fi by the title as you can tell a lot of the topics deal with strange weather but I really enjoyed Loaded, which is a re really interesting discussion on guns in the US. And this is mainly told from the point of view of, i trying to remember, I think he's a mall sort of security guard who does something he really shouldn't do and then things really spiral from there. But there's a lot of this discussion ar around, well, why don't we provide these, I'm gonna stop saying the word because I don't know if this video is gonna get flagged, 
but why don't we provide these items to teachers or people that should be sort of protecting us? But what if those people decide that they don't want to protect us anymore? So incredibly horrifying. I could see why a lot of the reviews said this was preachy, but I agree with him, so it just didn't bother me. And the other one that I read and really thought was a lot of fun was Aloft, which is about, I don't want to give away too much, but it's about a guy who goes skydiving with his friends and he falls and gets stuck on a cloud, which sounds like it might be kind of fun, but it's really horrifying and really disturbing. Hated the main character so much. I'm assuming that was intentional. I assume we're supposed to despise him, but it did make it a little hard for me to get into it just because I kept hoping he would die, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But as I said, fun and I think worth picking up. And finally, I read Give Me Your Hand by Megan Abbott. I haven't seen too many people review or talk about this book, but I but if the name Megan Abbott sounds familiar, that's probably because years back you also read Dare Me, which as a side note, that's about cheerleaders and it's really disturbing. Does that, did anybody watch Dare Me the TV show? It was originally on USA or some network like that and I it really didn't fit the network so I think no one watched it but then a lot of people might like myself once it was put on Netflix discovered it thought this was amazing but it's already been canceled <laughs> even though dare me ends on a cliffhanger please go watch it because I'm just hoping the more people that watch it there's even a petition to try and get season two it is so so good but anyway I was thinking that I should go back since I loved Megan Abbott so much and check out her other her other books and Give Me Your Hand is one of her newer ones. And this is about Kit Owens, who in high school ends up making friends with a very mysterious, strange other person in her class named Diane. Diane is incredibly intelligent, very, very motivated to do well. And Kit kind of takes that on and gets really inspired by Diane to excel academically. But she finds out something horrifying about Diane, which I won't say here. And then jump forward years later, now she's in her, now Kit is in her late 20s. She's made it into a program studying PMDD, which stands for Premenstrual Dysorphic Disorder, which I had not heard of, but is a real thing. And it's basically a very, very dark, picture PMS, and this is its very, very dark, scary cousin. And she ends up vying against Diane sort of for this position in the lab, although that's, if you've read the book, that's a very simplistic way of saying it, but I don't want to give away anything that happens. But I was reading a review on NPR and I thought they summarized Megan Abbott so well, which is they said that Megan Abbott has made a name for herself as a suspense writer who likes to make a study of closed communities and watch them implode, which is so true when you think about Dare Me and the scenario that was focusing on one little cheerleading team this is focusing on a couple friends in their little, very highly competitive, intense lab. I really enjoyed this book so much, and it makes me want to go back and pick up even more books by Megan Abbott, so please let me know which other ones by her you enjoyed. I did not enjoy this as much as Dare Me, mainly because I thought the ending of this fell a little bit flat. So I enjoyed the first 70% and the last 30%. I just thought seemed a little bit unrealistic and a little bit over the top, but I just enjoy her writing style so much, so I am really glad I picked it up. So those were all the books I read in 2021 so far. Again, I think a really strong start. I'm really happy with a lot of these. Please let me know if you've read any of these and what you think about them. Again, hope you all are doing well and staying safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.